Welcome back to the channel. I'm King Abaddon, and in today's video, we're playing XCOM Chimera Squad. So this is a game that I want to play on my channel since probably the day I started it, actually. I like the XCOM games. I liked watching them. Uh, I watched, I think I only watched one YouTuber play them, but he was really good at explaining everything. So I really understood the game. Also, I like these tactical type games. I ended up buying uh, Mario and Rabbids. Mario and something Rabbit's Kingdom or something like that. It was basically a Mario, a tactical shooter Mario game that they made, which is essentially in just a uh, XCOM knockoff. So I liked this game before I even played it. Honestly, I played it a little bit in my free time, but I've tried my best not to play it at all. Uh, we're doing story for players new to tactical games or who just want to experience the game's narrative. That's what we're going with. Play with a single save that is updated automatically as you progress through the game. Field missions must be restarted in an Iron Man game. Your choices and their consequences are permanent. I want this one because I don't want a bunch of save files. Failing any mission results in a total campaign loss. The campaign save is deleted upon failure and cannot be continued. I'm not going to do that yet, but if I were to play through this game again, which I might do, then I'll play with that one on. That way it's more of a, a thing. All right, set how much, if any, health is health will be healed for free between encounters. I don't want free health because that doesn't make sense. So I'm going to leave that all the way off. I'm going to leave the tutorial on because I think that also means that um, it's just little tips. I don't know everything about this game yet, so we'll leave those on. Also, I don't know the hotkeys yet, so I need to learn that too. Add five levels of city anarchy immediately, decreasing the strat strategic difficulty of the game. I don't want to turn that on because I don't want to be in easy mode. I just want it to be in story mode. Charging the fair. This is the one I would probably play it if I ever played it again. But looking at it in that one, because I started a few games like that, it lets you choose who you start with. Uh, but normally you just start with the same base set of teams. And then as you progress through the game, you get more and more uh, agents to choose from. So... Uh, I think that's everything. Hopefully it's loud enough. I actually didn't check and see if this game is balanced. Uh, I just used the same settings that I had for Minecraft. That way I didn't lose them. Uh, but I think this should be cool. I think I'm fine with this game being a little bit louder. I should be able to cut through the sound of this game better. But just in case, I'm actually going to lower the... The sound a little bit but i don't want it too quiet because this game does have an actual story that i want you to hear um okay so yeah but i think story mode iron man to keep the saves hardcore off extended off not too easy subtitles on no healing between encounters all right I wouldn't know. I spent most of the war training resistance networks. Like mine. And for your many, long years of service. Watch it. XCOM attaches you to an untested squad and pushes it into the field before it's ready. How is this not like the old days? I'm just happy to be here. I missed out during the war. I wish I could have pulled my weight. For which side, exactly? I find that very hurtful. Sure thing, Advent. <clears throat> We are through the checkpoint. I was never actually at that. But they were fitting you for a blocky helmet. Stow it, both of you. We're here. 3 1 PD gave us the all clear. Grab your gear and prepare to move in. Whisper, what's your status? And what's Verge's ETA? Comms are working, obviously. Verge is en route. How? Birch can't drive. He, um, he hailed the cat. To a hostage situation? Focus. Whisper, any surprises in the next room? A handful of hostiles, unaware of your approach. Camera squad, take positions. Prep for breach. All right. So, first thing is, XCOM is a... This is, would technically be the fourth game, I think. I think there's three XCOM games in their main uh, thing. This is a side 
uh, like a spinoff, like uh, how Halo Reach is a spinoff of the main Master Chief line. If you understand that one, hopefully you do. Or Bumblebee is the uh, the Bumblebee movie is a spinoff of the main uh, Transformers series and actually Transformers series in general. I don't think we've ever seen that before. Anyways, I'm also a Transformers nerd. Um, so what did he say? Cherub is and he's something so advent is the main alien bad guys and what they've done is what they did was they were taking humans i believe and uh altering their dna to turn them into advent and then with that they would uh what would they do with them they would put them into battle basically so it's their way of making new soldiers uh and that's what cherub is so that's why uh what is her name the other girl didn't like her. I can't remember. Not Godmother. Shit, what is her name? It just said it. Anyways, I'll see it in a second. Uh, this is the breach mode. So what you can do is you can set up your team in a specific way. How you want them to go in. The order you want them to go in. And then where you want them to go in. This one only has one point. So everyone's going to go through the same spot. And you can... Uh, you have these different modifiers that are applied when you go through them. Some of them are negative. This one has all positives. Uh, Terminal. Terminal doesn't like Cherub at this point in the game because Terminal thinks that he could still be bad or technically she had to fight against him. Godmother and then Cherub. So each character also has a different weapon, which will come into play a little later too. So in the breach, and this is this is a kind of a consistent thing with all the games you broke break through and sometimes you can apply different effects press left shift to cycle through all right cool i didn't see that tip last time that's why i have it on cycle through available targets with left shift and tab and then use enter use then use selected ability with enter that's both hands on this i guess that makes sense because you don't need the mouse i like to use the mouse though but yeah, so you can just choose who you want. I think it's an unlimited amount of time. I've never seen anyone take this long. It's just because I'm explaining stuff. But everyone gets a shot. Everyone who enters usually gets a shot, depending on their abilities. And as you see, each character has a diff slightly different gun. Its enemies take turns at a time that they occur. Agents have two action points each turn to use for movement, shooting, or abilities. Look for a blue shield to move into cover. All right, so I can explain all this. So yeah, since it's a strategy game, you know, you take turns back and forth. It's not always set up like this where it's like alternating. Sometimes you have more enemies. So to be one and then like two enemies turns and then another one of your team. But yeah, so you can do different stuff with it. And then you can also see which enemy goes where. So this is the second enemy, number two and number four. So who am I using right now? Terminal. I'm gonna move her over here. And there. So then the shield determines how much cover you have. So this is half cover and where's some word full cover? I can't use her to show that off right now. Why is Okay, he's all, all the way out of cover, so I will start with him, actually. And take him down easily. The rest of you surrender. Yes. But basically, the uh, the cover determines how easy or difficult it would be to hit someone. So right here, if there's an enemy... Damn, I'm trying to point my hand. So if I was right here with Godmother, an enemy on this side would not be able to shoot her at all. An enemy here would have a difficult time shooting her. Uh, but if I step right here, for example, that enemy would not have, would have a clear shot on me. But I believe, yeah, there's a 90% chance to hit. Knowing XCOM, it is possible to miss that shot. I've seen it in the videos that I've watched. to 
unpack the breaching car. Good man. Not exactly. You know what I mean. I always do. So creepy. Don't ever change. Verge, form up. Any hostiles in the next room? Yes. I feel them. Okay. Uh, multiple breach points in turn order. Okay, so I don't know what Verge is necessarily, but I know he has uh, psionic abilities, which is something that I think occurred during Advent, because I don't know the full backstory of XCOM. The Advent invasion again is the aliens that came through. Uh, agent, agent damage likely. Last unit through this entrance has plus three damage during the breach. Uh, enemy deal plus one damage during the breach. So I'm gonna send Cherub and terminal through this one sheriff has his shield which i do believe counts as have cover all the time if not then that's a level up for him i'm gonna try not to keep talking about stuff that will happen or try not to talk about stuff that will happen and just focus on what's happening now but it's gonna be difficult especially in the beginning as we go along then i can be i'll be able to customize more for how i play the game because that's another thing that's in this game too and then these two will go up here all right So right now we have four enemies looking at us, five total. So it did tell us that it had five. So I should have known. Well, not should have known this. I knew this before I came in. But I'm going to take the 100% shot just so I can get those enemies out the way. Uh, I'm going to take the 100% shot with her anytime I have it. Probably because I'm biased from seeing people play the game before. So I know that she has a higher chance of missing. I'm going to take all the 100% shots, actually. Just makes sense to do. They missed. All right, cool. So that actually worked out. So I believe enemies that are aggressive and alert. Oh wait, here we go. Each agent has a unique. Each agent has unique abilities they can use every every turn. Eventually, gaining more abilities from their class and equipment. Most agents also have subdue ability and non-lethal attack that is low damage but guarantees to hit. Use it to earn additional rewards and use certain mission objectives. Cherub uses the charge bash ability instead of subdue. So Cherub's shield uh, gains. Uh, charges. Is this is this does this do three damage? It does do three damage. Where's the other enemy though? If I can, I'm going to hit him first or her. I'm going to hit it first. Maybe that's better way to say it. I don't know yet. This is guaranteed three damage. Hopefully, or not guaranteed. It's guaranteed to hit. Hopefully, it does three damage so I can take him out. All right, cool. So that, that little encounter was easy because I got 100% shots in the first one. I don't know if that's guaranteed in the game. All right, so this is another thing that you have in the breach. Uh, you have special breach points that you get for having certain equipment or just character abilities. So in this case, Cherub has a breach charge, which lets us blow a hole in the wall. So an explosive entrance allows non-aggressive enemies uh, all non-aggressive enemies are gar guarding this entrance are surprised. I don't know what the surprise effect and all those different things do during the breach because I never, I don't think it was really explained. I think it just determines their, what they do during the breach. So alert, they might move, I believe. Aggressive, they'll shoot. And surprise means they won't do anything. If I'm just logicking that right. Yeah. And at this point, I don't think the turn order really... So I forgot what I was saying just a second. Oh, right now the turn order, or not the turn order, the breach order doesn't really matter because no one has any special abilities that I'm trying to um, play around with. He's dead. She's dead. And we'll take a shot at him and see if we hit. Hopefully we do. Critical hit. And take a shot at her and see if we hit. All right, cool. Right, 
protect you. Cherub is down. Terminal, stabilize him. On it. Birch, with me. Protect the mayor. Confirm. Alright, so agents that lose all their HP will be begin bleeding out. Uh, over several turns and indicated by the number of lives. The mission fails. The mission will fail unless the agent bleeding out is saved with the stabilized ability or the encounter is completed before the. God damn before the timer expires shit John so I bite my fingernails and then I use them to like clean my teeth basically by pushing the fingernail through or picking it out and uh I had one in my mouth and I guess I took a breath too hard and it just shot down my throat so that's always fun so again with Verge he has these he has cybernetic abilities so he has stupor and this one stuns enemies, basically taking away their turn for a time period. So he's stunned for two turns, so his turn will be skipped twice. Uh, and then he can continue to move around, too. I think we're going to ahead and stabilize Cherub with his turn because he has cover from that side. Okay. And since that, that creature, that uh, enemy is taken care of, we're going to come over to this side with her... And try and take them out. Yeah, okay. Alright. And I'm going to put her like right behind him. Godmother. Because I know her Her shotgun was basically a field execution at this point. Because it's point blank. Yeah, like right in the face with a shotgun. Four damage, which is enough to kill. Because it's one armor and then it's three health. He's still stunned, so he was going to stay down. I'm probably just going to beat him to death at this point. Could not arrest the hostile. It's okay. We'll, we'll get him. Yeah, here we go right here. Alright, so that's taken care of. Are you still with us? Yeah. I uh, think so. The only thing injured is my pride. And your diaphragm. And a few ribs. None of this should have happened. Most people say thank you. I'm I'm grateful, of course. But these people don't have the capabilities for any of this. Explain. I read their threat assessment. A month ago, these insurgents were all talk and no capability. The greatest threat they posed was to bottles of alcohol. Why tell us? Why now? City 31 shows the world how humans, hybrids, and aliens can keep a lasting peace. I'm the public face of this. Tonight, someone wanted what I represent to go up in flames. We're not in town for local intrigue. I know, but right now you're the only ones I'm certain of fighting for that same peace. Can I count on your support? Yes, ma'am. All right, so at the end of each mission, there's, you know, the warning you get. I keep pointing with my hand. I don't know why, but, you know, lightly wounded, gravely wounded, and unharmed. Gravely wounded can leave a scar, or any wounds can leave a scar on um, your characters, and those will come into effect later on. I'm mentioning this now because it, it's potential. It was a potential. There's a potential that it does not happen at all, um, but it just it makes a debuff or disadvantage to that character, and some at some point, not at some point on one of their abilities so it'd either be like their aiming or their overall health or something like that and those can be cleared up but um it's best not to get them at all so you want to try and in this game you want to try and be as safe as possible lightly wounded is the best you want to or is the worst you want to see at most wounded really at most but if you see gravely wounded you really messed up somewhere and then from capturing the enemies you get additional intel which is a resource in the game that you use to get stuff basically so the more enemies that you capture the more intel that you get and I think that's everything with this screen. Package delivered to 31 PD. She truly believes what she says. Why she's in charge? Not too shabby for our first official mission. Don't do that. Don't do what? 
celebrate before a mission is complete. It's... <laughs> it's bad luck. Well, I never actually saw that portion of the cutscene. the call through when you're ready i followed your action at the museum and its aftermath director kelly i take full responsibility for what happened stop i sent you to city 31 because i believed you were ready tonight you surpassed my expectations 31 pd requested help within three hours of your arrival in the city you answered immediately going in you were under equipped and down an agent you adapted as we trained you to do. And let's not forget, you rescued the mayor. You delivered her to safety as the city requested. Don't blame yourself for an outcome you couldn't control. Instead, let's focus on what's next. I set up the map table. Ready when you are. Head over there. I'll hold. All right, so this critical target information awaiting on the city map. The city map is basically where everything is uh, orchestrated from. Alright, so the map is where you see the status of <coughs> City 31 and, and any current targets. We can send our squad to respond to. Camaro squad can respond to one target per day, after which the day is automatically advanced. Alright. Alright, so we have this blue one. 31 PD detail pouring through the aftermath of tonight's attack. Mayor Nightingale's death has the city on edge. Let's do what we can to help. All right, sending the APC solve the situation will automatically advance the day. All right, it's the only thing we have to do, so it doesn't matter. There's really no effect in doing that. You've done what we can to A31 PD. Uh, Commissioner Maloof passed along her thanks for helping the, her officers bear the weights of the attack. Okay. Your work with 31 PD opened a few doors. Here's what we know. A crude plasma bomb killed the mayor. The insurgents had no access to materials for that. Does that mean they had outside help? Most likely. There are three groups in City 31 with access to this kind of ordinance. All right. Choose a faction to investigate. Target the... Wait. Choose a faction to be the investigation target. The target faction cannot be changed until it's resolved. All right. A loose network of human scions. Their vision for 31's future is entirely psionic whether the city wants it or not. Or we have the Great Phoenix, an organization of alien scavengers. They have quietly amassed the kind of weaponry rec reclamation is mandated to recover. An underground religion movement for hybrids. They breach salvation, but only those who once fought. They preach? Preach salvation, but only to those who once fought XCOM. So this is full of people who are basically against XCOM, the aliens that came to invade. These are scavengers who've collected a bunch of weapons, and these are psionics who are, want everyone to be psionic, basically. And I don't know if there's a way to do that or if they're trying to eliminate everyone who's not. Either way, though, I feel like the first two would be a bigger threat. Because uh, they have the weapons, but the the the, the grave... Oh, can this go away? 
Sacred Coil, Grey Phoenix, the Progeny. The Progeny have the mental capacity to do it just because they can get into people's heads. And then there's also the the Grey Phoenix having the weapons. I'm not sure about them yet because it does... They, they do still just have... Um, it's a religion, like a religious movement. I think I'm going to start with the progeny, though. Progeny have a small but loyal human membership, all with psionic capability. Victims willingly hand over what the progeny need and forget the whole thing. The perfect crime. Director, these are local criminals. Isn't that 31 PD's jurisdiction? True. The reclamation agency supports local police. But we're also required to recover dangerous material. From those who would do the world harm. And each of those groups is neck deep in the stuff. So what next? Focus on a single group. Investigate, dismantle their operations, and take them down. Meanwhile, we look for any links to the mayor's death. Either way, the dangerous organization is off the streets. Exactly. The city wants justice for Mayor Nightingale. This is how we help them achieve it. All right. So every, engage, every investigation has three stages. Groundwork from the first mission. Learn about the faction and their methods. Operations. Hidden missions that must be revealed when co then completed to knock out the faction's main plan. Stop the final attack and their threats to City 31. All right. Project leader is entirely sonic. Consultation with the Templar suggests a human with powerful sonic capabilities. Uh, we need to know more about the progeny before we can proceed with the investigation. A loose network of human signs. Their vision for 31 PD is entirely sonic, whether the city wants it or not. Uh, as of March 2nd, is that actually today? It is. That's interesting. I like that. It actually, it actually uses the the current date of recording, which is also going to be kind of awkward because some of these are being recorded really early. We're probably are probably going to get to being recorded really early. So, what is this? Pause? Oh, this brings up the pause screen. All right. So, the assembly line is on. Visit the assembly area to new for new available projects. Lyrium is one of the three resources reclamation requires. It's spent to complete projects in the assembly. So you can build a lot of different things here. Better weapons, armor, miscellaneous things, grenades, breach weapons, and androids. Androids, uh, construct an android op hub. This network allows us to use androids on tactical missions and enable new assembly projects. So what this is, is basically... Oh, Android unit purchase supply. I'm actually going to not talk about it because I just said I was going to try not to do that. The armory is where you manage your agents, load out, manage weapons, armor, and other items. Agents' abilities unlock new abilities by promoting agents that have earned enough XP. Agents' biographies learn more about the agent's background. Tents, armor, change color on your agent's uniform. So... There's a lot of stuff you can do in here. Slots become available and load out by completing assembly projects. Promotions are awarded to agents based on their performance in combat. New ranks come with increased stats, new abilities, and new training programs, all of which you see and manage here. The director convinced the city council we're too understaffed to be effective. This means we can bring more agents to City 31. It's not the whole squad, not yet, but it's something. All right. So of these three, these are actually three of the characters that I've seen, and I like all of them. So this is kind of a difficult choice for me. Um, one is close quarters, high mobility. The other one is utility, electronic disruption. And the other is high damage, cover destruction. So that's, uh, I can't pronounce her name. I think it's Zeph, 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 Zephyr, Patchwork, and Axiom. Yeah, so the other two are easy. So, let's see. You can read their their things. I'm actually going to read those, but I need to drink some water first before I actually try to. As you can see, she's a little different, and he's a little different than the rest. She's just a human. So, I'm going to start with her because hers will be, in theory, the least interesting. 
just by her being um, an earthling. So her old world origins is Mexico because everything switched around once the invasion happened. Prior to invasion, her first of three children raised in uh, Puebla, I think I said that right, orphaned and grievously wounded, lost both legs and an arm uh, when she was four years old. So from 2016 to 2034, her occupation raised community communally at the re relocation camp eventually moved into advent's version of a orphanage used as propaganda after a gene therapy clinic rebuilt her limbs grew dissolution with this disillusioned with advent as her te technical skills improved extracted by XCOM at the best behest of her anonymous tip of an anonymous tip later learned to be her own <coughs> Uh, War of Liberation initially supported XCOM as an engineer on the on the Avenger tra transition to active duty after mid 30, 2035 loss in, in personnel, 24 years old. Uh, remained with XCOM, transitioned back to engineering, joined the Reclamation a Agency at the personal request of Chief Shen. Her technical ac acumen is a boon to uh, Chimera Squad. So the one that I'll, I'm likely to pick, if she wasn't here, then I would definitely pick her. That would have been an easy choice. Uh, uh, I wish they would say their names because I can't pronounce it. But anyways, I think I'm because 10 health, 10 mobility. She has better aim. She has better willpower and more crit. I think just looking at the stats, she's better overall. Um, Fearless advance. Agent punches an enemy and inflicts an one and inflicts one of several status effects. The effect is either disarm, disorientate, stun, or root. This attack cannot miss and will trigger momentum. Zephyr blitzes towards an enemy and melee attacks them after the breach. This will position Zephyr near the enemy. Uh, if the enemy was alert, their alert breach action is canceled. So that could be useful. Chainbolt. Agent sends a gremlin to an enemy to jolt them. Attack chains to nearby enemies. Damage, damage is increased against robotic enemies. Hack opens a door at the start of a breach. So they both have breach abilities. Uh, smash. Agent charges to a target and smashes down with both fists. Chance to disorientate, stun, or render unconscious. Higher rage improves the chances to apply dis disabling effect. Higher rage raises the chance of applying disabling effects when melee attacks, but also increases the risk of berserk. Rage can be increased manually or by dam by taking damage. So he's essentially supposed to be a tank in a way, because the more damage he takes, the better he gets, unless he dies, which you don't want. Uh, so it's kind of hard to balance him. He'd be a hard character to use, but he'd be well worth it, I think. Uh, burst through doors, breaching. Uh, burst through a door breach point with a chance to panic nearby enemies panic chance increases with rage uh also I was shaking my leg and my arm was hitting my cord to my microphone so hopefully that wasn't making a bunch of noise anyways back to this so she was born in australia no confirmed past scattered records suggest she was australian undergoing the hybrid amalgamation and sonic lathe procedure in 2021 14 year, years old so this is what was happening the hybrids were basically there were humans that were mixed with the advent dna uh, officially created in 2021 per Advent Records, trans transferred to City 31, worked as a loyal Advent soldier under the Psionic Network, separated from the Psionic Network by the Skirmishers Resistance Faction, joined the Skirmishers and quickly rose in their ranks, operated primarily in City 31 region. Uh, fought Advent alongside XCOM for the duration of the war, was present for the fall of City 31, 28 years old. Uh, left skirmishers at the wars and applied to the reclamation agency after failing to uncover her human past. Recommended for a Chimera squad by multiple XCOM soldiers she once fought beside. And then lastly we have Axiom. He was a... he's an alien. I don't know what race he is though. And then we'll figure that out as we fight through the story. If you played the other XCOM games then you would know this, but I don't know this one. Maybe I'll go back and play the other XCOM games, but... I'm broke because I'm also in college. So, born and trained on an invasion transport ship, actively participated in the invasion of Earth, part of the first wave into Paris. 21 years old, selected as a candidate for conversion into a mutant. There it is. He's a mutant. 
uh, infused with human genetics material after ret retraining served as a various advent cities centers as high value target security transferred to city 31 provided security at the starport and ascension tower uh, after advent surrendered he was instrumental in stopping a crystallite outbreak in the fringe 41 years old detonation detention abridged due to his role in ending the Bugtown Massacre joined the reclamation agency at XCOM request. His abilities to lead by example is a boon in Chimera Squad. I think I'm still going to take her though. Because I feel like these two can fulfill the same role in getting close and hitting people. He does have a gun and I know that she doesn't. Uh, kind of just broke that rule where I know what they have already. Uh, and his th her thing is more interesting too. Interesting to see. She's very different. Um, I, hopefully, I get another chance to get her because she will be useful later. Um, but right now, I don't think she's as useful. Also, I like these two abilities a little better. It was Zephyr. All right, so she might be a little mean to people. Maybe she just doesn't talk much. She was different, basically. Tent armor. What color will I do on my armor? I don't want black. That's kind of too basic, even though I do usually do black. I think I'm going to go with blue. And I'm going to give apply armor tint to all agents. I already know her bio, bio, bi, biography. There's the word. Uh, momentum. Zephyr is immune to root and gains an additional movement at action after using crippling blow which is this one uh she has nothing right now oh yeah i like that light blue actually i'm gonna keep that all right uh i don't think i'm gonna uh will i go through and read all of them sonic support for uh infiltration into the into unit of thin men prior to sonic support for an inf infiltration unit of thin men actively worked to sub subvert human governments experimented with delicate long-term mental control of human subjects assigned to long-term control of an influential human who could keep the populace docile while comprehensible reassuring answers to their question about alien selected as a candidate to for conversion into a sectoid infused with human genetic material post conversion exhibited signs of empathy towards the human populace quietly began to tip off resistance groups served as a mole actively aided resistance groups and XCOM spent time in detention camps camp unit until XCOM realized his role in the war agreed to reclamation agency transfer director Kelly approved his admission to Chimera squad All right, so that's verge turns out he was pretty bad in the beginning until he was infused with human DNA I think that was part of XCOM's overall downfall um next up is cherub so here should be interesting old word estonia i've heard of that more recently than just this game cherub belongs to the empty cohort a batch of hybrid clones with full admin training but no admin inc indoctrination emerged from his clone creche no creche crit whatever i think i said right immediately befriended two XCOM soldiers uh, zero years old, 18 physically. Oh. That's 2035. I don't know what year it is in the game. Transfer to det detention center. Exhaustive test that revealed no advent sympathies despite being part of the Bolus Mar clone re line. Released from detention and recommended as a test case for XCOM utilizing skills for em empty cohort. Transfer to the re reclamation agency after proving his ca capabilities uh requested placement in chimera squad at first opportunity reclamation hq was, has observed his enthusiasm and proved the morale and proved the more morale of his squad on multiple occasions right so that's cherub then we have uh who's this terminal she was born in China, only child of a factory worker and a cook. Parents died in initial invasion. Her uncle fled with her to a re relocation camp. She was four. After her uncle died of a disease, she was effectively adopted by doctors who lost her only daughter to the invasion, transferred with her adoptive mother to a small town in the outskirts, began apprenticing in her adoptive mother's medical school. Our medical office, not a school, because she was apprenticing. Duh. After a punitive advent attack wiped out her punitive, Pun 
punitive. I can't remember what that word means. I used to know. Wiped out her town. A resistance group pulled her from the rubble and brought her to safety. She exhibited a severe shift in personality. Combat medic for the resistance group exhibited absolute fearlessness and saved hundreds of lives. Initially rejected for the reclamation, but requested regular psionic probes to prove she is fit to serve. A son to Chimera squad after probation probationary period sounds like she was just an asshole basically just going off of what she was how she talked to everyone else and her overall attitude so this is a godmother we know that she was in XCOM during the invasion or during the war so born in France national tactic police officer with a few years of experience went to ground after the fall of Paris spent foolish years searching for her family provided operational training to the nascent European resistance group strongly advised against direct resistance, which she learned brought overwhelming rep reprisal raids connected with XCOM proper during the lean leaner years remained a friendly asset as the organization rebuilt itself in 2032. She developed a formalized tactical training program to screen XCOM recruits few to liaison to an allied resistant group supporting XCOM. Oh, she's kind of old, huh? 43 modified the XCOM recruit training program to suit the needs of the reclamation agency drawn chimera squad provision provisionally to ensure field ready status so she's still it sounds like the leader behind everybody she doesn't it doesn't sound like her main role has been in the fields so now have a critical mission investigate the prodigy uh, credits are one of three resources reclamation requires. They are spent to supply to both buy new items and upgrade existing ones. All right, so give 45 credit to Whisper, Whisper here. I'll keep you updated on any activities requiring our attention. Speaking of which, an entire progeny front company just opened fire on 31 PD. Uh, we should check out, check that out right away. All right, the following HQ activities are currently on uh unaddressed one or more agents is idle oh yeah i should probably get that set up before i do anything um the armory Okay, so the combat android. Well, there's no combat androids in here. I don't know why you even brought that up. Seize fire, flash, rank, smoke, grenades. I don't think I want grenades yet. But I do want these trank rounds. Uh, if the target would be killed, they will be rendered unconscious instead. Unconscious units are captured at the end of each mission. Reclamation gets more intel from live captures than body counts. Agents are encouraged to incorporate non lethal trank rounds into their loadout. Tracer rounds increase. Give me the thing. All right. The round grant plus five aim to agents when equipped containing high tech smart rounds that relay that relay detailed tracking data back to the shooter when fired. The specialized ammo grants bonus aim when equipped. Uh, I'm going to take trank rounds. Only about three. Because as I mentioned, ooh, do I take a med kit? I think for now, though, I'm going to put on this as Godmother accept that and then i'm gonna put uh zypher on the team i think that's how we said her name uh and i think that's everything this is our status in the investigation so yeah at this point we're ready to go and then after this i'll end the episode Okay, so Trank Rounds go for everyone who has a gun because that extra intel will be useful. I'll just make items available for any uh, any squad member, I guess is the way, or any soldier who's not on the actual squad or in the APC, I think is what it's called. So yeah, I think at this point we are ready. Every, we have Trank Rounds and that's really it. So yeah, this is the first official mission, I think. PD asked to speak with this company's owner about his connections to the progeny. 
That's when his staff pulled weapons. The police barely made it out. Does anybody hear that buzzing? Reminds me of Advent's psionic network. You would know better than I would. Keep your mind peeled, I guess. Yeah, it's kind of funny though, because I think she was one of the people controlled by Advent's psionic networks. Enemies are harder to hit. Unless you know through this entrance will be rooted for one turn. I'm gonna send I'm gonna send everyone units entering there to get plus there's four enemies there, three there. Cause twenty five aim during the breach. I'll give that to her. And I'm gonna send everyone through here and Cypher's gonna go last because I know she's immune to the rooting effect. So if that is true and it holds through even with the whole breach effect. I don't know if the breach effect is more powerful than her um immunity to that. So we'll find out uh right now. 100% chance, always taking those shots. I don't think that killed. Or stunned, I guess, is the better way to say it. I have a pretty high chance at all of them. He's already low, so I'm going to leave him low. I'm going to try and lower his health because his is pretty high. And she will go for their low. They're low. I'm gonna take the furthest enemy away. Uh, which I think is you. You're the furthest enemy away who's not also about to die. And then you would shoot at him. Hopefully kill him. No, okay. So this is her breach effect. She doesn't have a gun, but she has these, I guess, uh power gauntlets. Once per turn an agent can be moved in moved on the timeline so that they are take their next turn this ability is shared by the entire squad preparation granted a def defensive bonus and moves the agents next turn early in the timeline use this when an agent is caught in a dangerous situation or to coordinate tactics all right so right now what buttons it e yeah okay e and q turned the camera i have them switched though i said e and pressed q so he's low he's low She's low and she is dead. I think she's dead. All right, so kinetic shield. This ability, Chair places an energy shield on itself or an ally to prevent all damage of the next turn. Chair gains one charge when the energy shield is destroyed, does not automatically end the turn. So, because she's going to be out there and have pretty much no cover most of the time, I'm putting that on her. And if I can reach them or someone else, I would like to. If I do this here, that's the one that's going to have the next turn. So I am going to do this, actually. Take him out unconscious. Okay. So now it's Verge. Number two. Number two is you. Uh, should I bother putting you in stupid? You're likely to attack her. But you're an acolyte. It doesn't look like that this person doesn't look like this person has a gun. So I want to make sure that they don't use some sort of a psionic attack. Resistance. Okay, so they're resistant to psionics, which makes sense because we are against the psionic masters, I guess is the way to say it. Uh, and let's use battle madness. Hopefully this takes effect because he might take out the other enemies for me. Oh, they do have pistols, but he missed. Okay. So, that was pretty useless of a turn for Verge. But, are, are they just moving? Of course. Psionic suplex. So, I mean, it makes sense that he lifts up. Zyphus Crippling Blow applies one of several disabilities. Okay, I know that one. Crippling Blow is her basic attack, too. <laughs> So she's really good at moving moving around on the field. Um, let's take you out before you do whatever you were finna do to Cherub. I like him not hurt. He's pretty useful overall. So yeah, see, that was my attack. And usually after the attack, you don't get an extra move. But because of her momentum ability, she can still move. And she also wasn't rooted during the breach. Who are you going for? Probably... Yeah, again, Cherub. Okay. 
So this, this is intern, does not automatically intern. Right, so this is a little bit of a healing spray, basically. And it also adds a defensive buff. So I think that makes it harder for them to be hit. Um, yeah. Can you reach them to subdue? You cannot. What is my chances of hitting? Okay, that doesn't make it doesn't make sense to take that shot. So I'll just move up and try and get a little closer. A cherub can shield bash, so I might as well because that's a guaranteed hit. They only have one health, so take them out. You know. The shield is lost between um, rounds, which I dislike, but it does make sense because it probably be a little overpowered. Makes sense. Uh, so she's the only non advent person on the team. There's fewer aggressive enemies here. First unit through here, this entrance does an extra three damage during the breach. I'm still going to send her through, uh, Zypher. Uh, I'm likely to get her killed on accident. I'm not going to lie. But the way her attacks work is really useful. And her doing an extra three damage does work out pretty well because she already does a decent amount of damage from the base. From the base. From the jump. Okay, so I can take them out, them out, and them out. I want to hit something with higher health because I have this extra three damage to hit. Okay. And... Does this count as during the breach though? I don't know. I think it says directly after the breach. There's someone else over here. 72. But this one's 100. Always take the 100. Interesting. Way of shooting. 100 there and 100 there. So that's a throw. That's an acolyte. 3 to 5. If I do max damage, I'll kill. Uh have to do there's a higher chance of killing that one than killing that one off rip so i'm gonna do this one yeah there we go although it did do five damage so technically i could have killed this acolyte but it's still not guaranteed 91 81 71 they're alert so they're gonna do something i kind of want to get some damage on them okay maybe aim before you shoot that would be helpful dog all right I don't know what lead by example is. Probably from taking out someone during the uh, breach. Okay. Alright. I don't know why she has... Oh, subdue because this kills. Subdue does not. So that's why she still has both. Even though technically she's doing the same thing either way. Are you number two? You're not. Can I reach anyone else? I can't. So we'll go ahead and take you. How much does her subdue do? Three to four. Or two to three, read that wrong. Alright, let's hit it. Yeah, fracturing is definitely the right way to do that. Weapon disabled, doesn't matter, they're dead now. Uh, that whole thing is a little interesting. Don't remember who I shot right there. But let's get her moving over. I want to keep her in cover still. I want to keep everyone in cover, really. Maybe this would have been a good time to use team up, actually, so this acolyte didn't get a free hit on a pretty much whoever he chooses, but they're using psionics. And again, going for Cherub. This man Cherub will never catch a break. But, um, I think they're gonna die right now anyways. Only a 62% chance. I'm willing to put her right in his face, or their face, because I, I don't know if this is a boy or a girl. Just because they should die right now. Like, they, they shouldn't live past this turn unless something crazy happens where Verge misses. Uh, but even then, I'll get another turn with... Uh, with... Uh, Zypher. There, okay. Cherub's almost gotten suplexed twice already. What is that? Oh. Uh, some offices. Now the owner must be holed up in there. 
Okay. Skill split shots on enemies breach will stun. Not aggressive enemies guarding this entrance uh, will be surprised. So this one has less. I'm actually going to send everyone through here. And I actually want her to go last this time since we're all going through the same spot. And then immediately pick their not last. All right, there we go. Because whoever they don't shoot, she's going to go for. So we have a thrall. Um... An acolyte and a thrall. That thrall has extra cover though, so I'm gonna start with this one. Let's see if we get the kill off rip. We don't. Makes sense though. Uh, spread the damage around. This could potentially be a kill. Also not a kill. I uh, really like to leave him with one health, I guess. Yep, keep up the trend. Keep up the trend. So far, the Acolytes have been doing the most damage to us. So, blitz towards enemies and melees them after the breach. So, anything that says during the breach, I should not use for her anymore because her attack is after breach. What is this one? Gain bonus defense and dodge until this agent's first turn. Uh, I'm going to do this one. And this should hopefully put her in a safe spot. And then I'll be able to go for them next. That alert enemy. And hopefully they can't do anything to me, because I actually don't remember. Hunker down. Okay, so they're not doing anything. Oh. Subdue. Alright. Can I see her from here? It doesn't look like it. Okay. Who's the first enemy? Alright. Gonna get you with the shield bash. Ah, but number three will be right after that. So, I'm gonna team up with. Oops, hit my microphone. Who am I gonna team up with? Who's likely? I'm gonna team up with her. And these two together can uh, subdue those two. So, you're gonna take out the number two character with your back to cover from the rest of the enemies. And we're gonna hold this room, I think, because um, they will have to move through this room to get out. Not you, you. Uh, that's a window, so I'll, have, I'll get half cover when I move here. Subdued hostile. And then your turn, all right. So we have an enemy in there hunkered down and they're up next. Mm -mm. Do I still have an angle from this point? Can I tell? I can. Let's see. I should I should be able to hit that one from here. I can also shoot that uh, VIP because I'm using these trank rounds. Um, and we want him to be subdued. So, you know, trank rounds. Put some to sleep. Oh, that's an acolyte. And I just grouped up a little bit. So hopefully he doesn't have any AOE attacks. He's also just stomping on his teammate's body. Um, at least he's not asleep though, I guess. Soul fire. Again on Cherub. They're really trying to give him a scar. And I went ahead and talked those through already, so I don't have to worry about explaining that again. Number two. Let's see if I can take out... Okay, well, I can't see them. So, I'll just shoot them then. Oh, but it's such a low chance. I'll overwatch right here. So, overwatch. Uh, Rich takes reaction shot at the first enemy to move within his cone of, uh, of fire. Activating overwatch ends the turn. Oh, I guess I could see. Well, I don't want to kill on accident, so that's why I'm not doing battle madness. I want that door covered in anywhere that this acolyte can move. Because if he comes to the door, he's getting spotted. Of course, he moved away from the door. Who does he have an angle on? Probably Cherub, knowing how they've been acting. Oh, I actually hit Terminal this time. And they're going for it. Verge got him taken down. Alright, so now... Who can you reach? You can reach him. 
Might as well go ahead and subdue. I should have put on a kinetic shield for her first. Such a such a great choice, not gonna lie. Lightly wounded on Cherub and Terminal, that's not too bad. From captured nine enemies, you earn twenty intel. I think I'm capturing way more enemies than I need to, but better safe than sorry. The extra amount of resources is gonna be useful no matter what. So might as well get it every time. Alright, forty five credits, twenty intel. Uh, from the archives, Bradford, aliens in the agency, aliens in your agency, Jan, what are you thinking? Uh, Kelly, what, what is our greatest ex existential threat? Bradford, the elders returning, Kelly, if they do, who will we need to fight them off? Bradford, everyone I get, everyone, I get it, I've seen the projections, but do you really think the commander will go for this? Kelly, I think the commander has always seen the bigger picture. Transcription of Reclamation work, Working Group Meeting 2037, August 25th. It's not far from my birthday. That's true, but then at that point, why not take over Mayor, Night Mayor Nightingale and just control her? So maybe that, I think that brings down the whole theory that it's them. Uh, confiscate Progeny Tech. You've seen Progeny using tech of an unfamiliar design. None of this came from Advent. Track down the source of this tech. We need to know how they're using it. All right. Uh, Chimera shut down a Progeny Front Company, reviewing the inbound, impounded data gave Reclamation a better sense of the Progeny's scope of goal, scope and goal. Alright, visit the Spirit. All right, so now we have a bunch of stuff here that we can go through. We have Spec Ops. I'm authorizing Chimera Squad for special operations. Some ops provide useful resources for the squad. Keep an eye out for these opportunities. Uh, Spec Ops are solo agent duties that can help Chimera Squad and City 31 overall. They can improve unrest, gain resources, or reward temporary advantages on missions. Uh, each spec ops provides a different reward, some each turn, some only when the op is completed. Advanced spec ops become available as your agents rank up. The higher level spec ops require higher level agents to undertake. Agents can cancel spec ops early, re re reassign to other duties, but all progress will be lost. Alright, so this one gives us 100 credits, this one gives us 80 intel, and this one gives us 35 illyrium. I don't think we really have the manpower right now to do that. Um, grant one Android tactical unit. Android units purchase and supplies unlocks all entry level assembly uh, projects. So we can get modular weapons, modular armor, or modular androids. I think what's going to be most useful for us is either the armor or the the weapons, especially since that priority, which means they'll be going faster. And I think we have twenty five Valerium. These cost the exact same. Weapon mods and armory, auto loader stock, expanded granite, expanded magazine. I don't know how I got expanded made. Mock weave, extra padding, infiltrator weave. I'm gonna get this one because I do have further information on the game, and the armor is overall better, at least early on. All right, there are a variety of kinds of missions, mission targets, investigations. These appear purple, whether a ground, where they groundwork, operation, or takedown, and will advance the game story. Side. These appear yellow. Uh, they are optional, but provide valuable rewards. Emergency. These appear red, showing up in districts with unrest problems. More info. The current investigation's main mission is always the map, always on the map, but 
is sometimes hidden. Hidden missions can add unrest to their district every day and they, they, every day they are active. They gradually reveal over time, but you can discover this by with lead missions. Lead missions appear unpredictably while a hidden mission is active. Leads are optional but can provide a large boost to the reveal of progress. Side missions are ideal for gaining resources and helping control unrest in the di in the districts. Yeah, I do like this blue actually. Maybe I'll switch up the colors if anyone has any suggested colors. I'll give them a I'll give a suggested color a try. But uh if it doesn't beat the blue or if it's or if there's too much attention, like it's pulling my attention too much, I'm gonna switch it. Alright, so we have last stand. And that makes sense. Uh, so this is a medi patch. Uh, we can get that from completing this mission. Uh, our opposition took a hostage when they realized through PD had been surround had them surrounded. We need to move in before it turns into a bloodbath. All right, so that's one of the missions we could do. We have Cutting Edge. Uh, the Room PD received a tip about an Illyrian power device used in a string of recent burglaries. We should seize it before it slips away. 45 Illyrium right there. Uh, and these two are our main mission. So this one's hidden. Uh, we don't know what's happening to it, as it explained just a second ago. And then this one, plus three days towards Operation Reveal, 50 credits. Uh, through MPD believes in the progeny. The project progeny are testing prototype psionic equipment inside a chemical plant. We should stop the progeny's field test while we still can. So I'm likely to t do one of these side missions first in the next episode. Mm, not sure which one yet though, because this one gives us a medi patch which lets us heal between. Um, between encounters which is like every time you breach at a breach point is an encounter so at the second at the second and third breach point is when this would be useful so you can hear your team back up uh but then th these other ones offer resources this one offers straight up money plus three days towards the reveal for this um mission and that's five days so I have to think about that more. But it's either prevent field test or last stand. I think that's where I'm going to boil it down to. But that's all going to be for the next episode. Uh, oh, we have a new Android too. Let's look at this. You have constructed an Android unit. These versatile soldiers are valuable backups to your main squad agents. On any mission where one of your agents is evacuated, an Android can take their place for the remaining encounter. So this would be uh, using the first mission, for example. When Cherub went down, he would then be replaced with an android because and because of that you still would have your four um teammates instead of being down a teammate in the breach which is probably why it gave us this i don't really have anything to give this character though uh besides i think i prefer them to have a shotgun or sub four in the clip three to five damage four in the clip three to five damage three in the clip four to six damage so yeah, and at this point, I'm not going to give them Trank Rounds because if they killed a teammate at that point, it's on for everyone. I don't like how that looks, actually. I don't think I like the way this thing looks in general. I don't think I like how it takes colors. So I'm just going to put it in black and leave it be. Vision processor. Oh, I actually never looked at these. I guess that would increase its mobility. It's mobility, it's aim. Well, it's aim for vision. Uh, it's processors, I assume crit. Chassis would be armor and motor would be mobility. What did I say mobility for? Oh, well. Anyways, that's important unless I go down the line of upgrading that. So, yeah, Godmother is going to be doing our modular armor. And, yeah, I think that's everything. So, thanks for watching. Don't forget to follow all my other socials in the in the 
description below. I was pointing down in real life for some reason, just because I know it's below. And don't forget to like the video and share it with your friends and all that stuff. Helps me grow the channel. Hopefully it fixes the search engine because I just realized that I switched my name last year in like August around that time. And it said, wait six weeks, and then it'll change the name. Uh, it's been like over six months at this point, and it still hasn't been switched. So, I don't, I don't know. Maybe I'm just doing something wrong. Um, yeah, so sharing the channel is really the best way for me to grow, because you can't find it by accidentally searching. So, yeah. Uh, but I'll see you in the next video, whatever that video is going to be. Bye.